So the bottom line about the thing about the anti-MLM community and me thinking was cool, I just want to get that over with because I have so many other things I want to say. Um, number one, I was accepted so quickly. Like, I don't even know you, but you're being so nice to me and you're putting me in groups and you're praising my work and you're telling me I'm wonderful and you're giving me clips and you're talking to me at, you know, four o'clock in the morning and you're listening to me and you're voicing, voice messaging me on DMs and you're, it's like, it was happening so fast and I didn't see it. You know, when it's happening so fast, you don't see it. And that reminded me at the end, it reminded me of being an MLM because I started putting two, two and two together and I was like, this is weird. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cam. And if you're not new and you keep coming back again and again, thank you, we really, really appreciate you. So I wanted to make this video really, really quickly because I made this video in which I kind of talked about Kimberly's response because I reached out to Kimberly. And there were a couple of comments that kind of uh, implied or even said straight up that I didn't do enough research that I should have reached out to the other girls in the anti-MLM community. And I completely 100% agree with that. But I didn't realize at the time how, how freaking big this was, you know. After I posted that video, just basically like all hell broke loose. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm rectifying that mistake because I really don't want you guys to think that I'm taking Kimberly aside. I just wanted to hear what she had to say for herself because everyone was talking about her and I just kind of wanted to give her an opportunity to talk. That's why I reached out to her, but it's not because I, it's not for any other reason, if that makes sense. So in this video, I have reached out to the girls that Kimberly has a problem with and that Kimberly mentioned in several parts of the statement that she made through the emails she sent me. I reached out to Madison from Cruel World, Happy Mind, Isabella Lanter, Diana Mims and Tiana Liss because they were the girls that um, were kind of mentioned by Kimberly in her statement previously. Okay, so basically this video is just a part two to the side of the anti-MLM community um, in the situation with Kimberly, so you saw Kimberly's response when I reached out to her. I think of it as like you know media comment. So I asked for comment, and she commented. She replied to my emails, and she said all these things. And now I've asked the other girls because I don't want things to just be one-sided to just have like Kimberly's side. I also wanted to share what the NTM. MLM community as a whole, or not as a whole, but these girls in particular that Kimberly mentioned in her statement, what they think about the situation. They replied to me, everyone got back to me, so I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. But Tiana and Diana don't want to comment, and fair enough, you know, they don't have to comment. But I did receive two pretty substantial responses from Madison from Cruel World Happy Mind and from Isabella Lanter. So I'm going to read those in this just because I want you guys to see both sides on my channel. So if you come to my channel and you're following this story, I want you to have all the information that I gathered just because I feel like I feel like people sometimes can just like twist the narrative and I don't want to let them do that. I thought in my previous email, it was very clear to everyone watching that I am anti-MLM and even though I'm not necessarily in the community, I now feel way more than ever part of the community just because I've been speaking with these girls um, like for a couple of days now. I'm gonna start with uh, uh, the statement from Isabella and then I'm gonna move on to Madison from Cruel World Happy Mind. So this is what Isabella said, okay? Hey Camilia, first off, I greatly appreciate you reaching out to me. I hope you're doing well through all of this. I know this is a really difficult topic and it's been hard for all of us. Please know that I'm in no way bothered that you didn't reach out to the other creators for your video. I never want to give off that impression. You were sharing an email from Kim and I totally get why. I have nothing but love for you and I truly want to reassure you of this before I talk about all of this. So in regards to everything, this entire situation with Kimberly leaving the community, leaving the community is not the issue. The main issue that was surrounding her leaving was how she went about it. 
Her live stream speaking down on her audience and others was very wrong. Anyone can leave the community because not everyone can handle this and that is okay. It can be overwhelming. You can still be anti-MLM but not want to create content about it. But with her leaving, she did it terribly and instead of gracefully leaving, she decided to drag everyone through the dirt which was uncalled for. Especially doing all of this advocating for a check was disgusting. Not caring about these people and wanting the money was truly appalling. Again, she actually stated this in the live stream. She has deleted the live stream but there is another fellow youtuber who reacted to it on her channel so you can see it all through her I'm gonna link this uh, video below now once she came out as Joy Nimona I personally spoke up because I knew this was going to happen and I wanted to immediately call her out because I knew this was going to badly affect people on her team she's now growing a team However, with my video, I had absolutely no clue that it would reveal the people she hurt in the community, her own YouTube channel members. I had crazy amounts of screenshots, voice recordings and messages shared with me of her treating her audience terribly and saying they didn't deserve a refund, berating them, gaslighting them, yelling at them. It was honestly so bad I had to actually stop breathing them for a bit because it literally broke my heart seeing those harmed. I mentally had to take a break. That's when I got involved with YouTube and other creators chimed in willing to help. We decided to come together and ask YouTube what we could do. YouTube recommended me to have people that were personally affected by her report the channel. I asked for my audience to do so and pushed the stories to the internal team. I wanted to at least do everything I possibly could to help these members. I wasn't going to stand by and be cool with Kim not offering what she promised to members and treating these paying members horrifically. Her claiming it's all lies is funny because I have messages in proof of her being aware of these issues and even encouraging members to take this up with YouTube. In regards to everything else she said, I know she is just grasping at this point. Her random statements, feelings on our content, etc. can be so easily debunked. There's no backing and no truth. It's comical at this point. The friends that betrayed her were the ones that fought for her until they saw her true colors. Then they called her out for talking down on them and harming others. Nobody betrayed her, she betrayed herself by treating everyone in a disgusting manner. Sadly, she is pointing the finger at everyone else for her childish behavior. She is surprised that we work together as a community because that's what we do, to take her head on and call out her unethical actions and behaviors. And she is doing ex everything she can to try and scare us. We are not fearful. We are a strong and powerful community that doesn't stand for our fellow viewers being treated terribly. I'm not fearful of her so-called lawyer. I'm not worried about a single thing. At this point, in my personal opinion, she's desperate for people to carry on her legacy and give her attention due to her dying career. Saying she can track me down, Kim, I will gladly give you my address, number and anything you need. I have nothing to hide, nor do I have any fear. One further thing I want to state when she says she wants to join these companies for research, it's absolutely not necessary for research. Hence why my personal opinion that she's joining Monet for money, a community and to get everything she lost back. We have hundreds of men and women who leave these MLMs and come to us with proof and truth. Joining an MLM makes no sense for her on in regard to doing it just for research purposes. Please don't feel any form of pressure to share this. You 100% can, but I know this is a lot. I know you probably have so much to deal with right now, but thank you so much for being so willing to hear me out. It really means a lot to me. At the end of the day, I want this over with. I want her to go away and quit milking this situation so she can gain attention. I want this to be done. This community has been through enough with her and we want to recover and grow. Best and thank you so much, Isabella. Here's the email from uh, Madison from Cruel World, Happy Mind. Hi, Camilia. I can't speak for everyone else, of course, but a few things I would like to clarify from my perspective. When Kay mentions that she started taking screenshots of the community, etc., in the email to you, to me, that's her way of saying that she started to take private message screenshots, share them with people, and try to turn members of the community against each other. She did it with me and many others I know, and it backfired on her. She thinks she can manipulate situations well, but I highly disagree. As far as the claims she made regarding me, we have talked on multiple occasions, which of course I showed proof of in my original video on this. She had initially reached out to me, making herself out to be an experienced YouTuber who can help me with any questions I have about YouTube. We initially had small talk about hate comments etc. Then a situation arose where I needed her advice. A large creator came out with a video that wasn't a carbon copy of mine or anything like that but there were a lot of similar sources used and a lot of the points made in the video were similar to mine. I wouldn't necessarily use the word copy myself but I was getting a lot of messages that this larger creator copied my video because a lot of other people picked up on the similarities. I think 
another reason I was getting messages about this video was because the creator didn't initially list any sources on the video with just a statement in the description that says sources coming soon. So because I had trusted Kay initially and thought she was someone I could go to for advice, I messaged her and asked her what I should do. Kay said I should message the larger creator and just try to talk to her about it. So that's what I did. Then all of a sudden I get strange messages from Kay about how she doesn't think this large creator is a good person. Things that I think were an attempt to bait me into saying something bad about this large creator and I started to think this was all a setup and noticed immediately what's going on so I disengaged from what I remember in the conversation I would usually say things like uh, I would be bummed if this larger creator copied me because I look up to them and their content. I never said anything about the creator that was distasteful and I was really just trying to navigate a complex situation. A few days up after the situation happened and the larger creator never responded to my DM, I thought, well, this whole situation is stupid. I think it's great this person covered the topic and I don't really care about this at all. Now I have multiple people telling me for months, Kay has been going on her Discord talking about how I am accusing this creator of copying me and saying her and this creator are great friends who have calls for hours. I can't help but wonder what those calls are about. Kay was successful in getting this creator riled up because they went on a podcast and spread complete lies about me and my content, saying I accused them of copying me, which I never did, and saying I demanded credit, which I never did, also saying some other blatantly false information. I'll be coming out with a video on this soon and showing the facts at the ends where I really said and how both creators responded. It feels so sinister to me that an adult woman would try to drum up drama and pin two women against each other like this, especially since she initially made it out to be that I could come to her for any advice but the second I do she sees it as an opportunity to put me down and manipulate me to try and befriend and befriend a larger creator. The fact that this larger creator fell for it is uh, well disappointing to say the least and they look quite ridiculous now that Kay has joined an MLM. Of course once Kay joined an MLM this creator unfollowed them immediately and pretended like the whole thing never happened. Regarding this thing on my video coming out of nowhere and being the result of Tiana and I in contact with each other, no that's not the case. I study scammers on a daily basis. There are some patterns I've picked up when people begin joining an MLM or gearing up to sell a course or scam people. I noticed some patterns. I noticed when I would look into drama, it would all mysteriously lead back to this one person. And I knew in my gut I had to warn people about what I was seeing before more damage was done. Like I said, this person believes themselves to be a great manipulator and I do think there was some greater plan where they were trying to work out what they feel, Tiana, and I thwarted. I can't 100% say for sure, but all of my gut instincts regarding this situation have proven to be right so far and I definitely think it goes to show how important it is to trust your gut. Anyways, I reached out to Tiana because K trying to go after her relentlessly thinking she can get away with it because T was probably seen to her as a small creator was beyond unacceptable to me and was the tipping point where I knew I couldn't let this person continue to do stuff like this without speaking up. Regarding the lawyer aspect, I'm aware of this person's affinity for lawyers, which is why I try to keep things as anonymous as possible. Not because I'm worried my opinion is anything that could get me in legal trouble, but because I like to avoid the unnecessary lawyer fees where I can. For someone who claims to hate cancel culture, Kay sure is trying to silence anyone who speaks out against her through sending her lawyer after them. Ironic. In the end, she's only wasting her money. Fair use exists for a reason. Free speech exists for a reason. You cannot silence someone just because you don't like what they have to say. I have also come across important information that right underneath our noses, Kay has really scammed and manipulated people in her YouTube membership back when she was making anti-MLM content. Some people are willing and brave enough to come forward with their stories in a video I'm working on and I know Kay will try to go after them in a similar way she did with Tiana. They are prepared for that and even knowing that, they are willing to speak out because of what Kay did to them was so damaging and hurtful. hurtful. Because of what I've heard, I feel this person should no longer be reasoned with and should no longer be acknowledged. They are a stain on the anti-MLM movement and everything it stands for. The things I have discovered about them make me sick to my stomach. The last thing I will say is in regards to the general community that this person has attempted to tarnish by calling it a hate group or extremist group or who they say is attacking them because multiple videos from various creators were made about them. First off, the internal misogyny is mind-blowing. I find it funny that no internal community that's predominantly male gets the same sort of criticism and labels. 
If multiple male creators came out with videos on a situation, it's a reason why the situation is legitimately concerning because multiple people have the same concerns and opinions regarding the situation. But women in the anti-MLM community come out with fair, balanced, calm, critical videos on a situation and it's they're all ganging up on someone. There are amazing male creators on YouTube who expose scammers and they are seen as heroic for doing so. But when women in the anti-MLM community critique MLMs, they are bullies and haters. This is misogyny, plain and simple. Of course, I'm sure some videos take things too far, but to label an entire community as, well, basically bitchy and negative, it's just misogyny. I hope that talking point will be derailed soon for what it really is because I see right through it to be honest. And that's all I think I have to say on the situation for now. There's a lot going on and the video I'm releasing is probably going to be super long but I feel I need to put an end to all of this. Honestly, I have seen over and over how much this person will lie through their teeth. I do not trust anything that comes out of their mouth at this point and advise others to proceed with the same caution. They use people as puppets or chess pieces and drop them the second it's no longer a relationship that can give them something. This happened to a member in K's YouTube membership. They were friends for a while and then the second this person expressed to K how she hurt them, K basically said, well, we were never friends in the first place. Doing that to someone who supported you for years, I can't imagine the pain that K has caused. This is my take on the whole situation. Feel free to use this email in a video if you'd like. So these are the statements basically that I got from the anti-MLM community in regards to the Kimberleya situation. And basically, um, I think it's just... I hope it doesn't come across as mean because this is not my intention at all. But I feel like even in the emails that I received from Kimberleya, there was a lot of like fluff and information that I didn't necessarily need that I thought was there to kind of... Um, influence me in uh, into just being on her side or something. At this point, I just kind of feel like Kimberleya has decided to join an MLM. She thinks she can succeed. She even said that in one of the emails she sent to me. And I wish her the best of luck in succeeding in her MLM. But I think that in order for her to succeed, she needs to like do the same things that other MLMers do who are successful. And that includes manipulation and that includes kind of you know, getting people under you and just kind of creating the pyramid and stuff like that. And basically, there's a reason these companies, including Monet, are under so many lawsuits. And Kimberlea, if you're watching this, I would really urge you to think about this point that basically think, think about the fact that um, these business models are failing and they don't have much of a future. Sure, maybe they're not going to necessarily die in the next two to five years, but it seems like they're on their way out because they are so predatory and so many bad things happen. Basically, people just waste so much money and time trying to make it in this business. So I would urge you to reconsider. Monet has just settled. Is it I think it's Monet that just settled a lawsuit for like $4 million or something like this. They don't want to go to trial because they know that they might lose. I mean, I know there's more to that and I'm sure that you're well aware of what's happening at the moment, but I, I would just urge you to think that this, uh, to think about whether or not you do have a future in Monet or in another MLM. And even if you do, is it worth the stress? Is it worth the extra work in like the people that might not make it under you? And I'm sure that you've actually thought about all these things, but I, I just felt like I had to say it. But uh, other than that, this is probably my last video on the situation. I don't want to like continue to perpetuate the drama. I kind of want to put this to rest as well. At this point, I feel like Kimberly, I should also apologize to the anti-MLM community. Sure, she doesn't necessarily need to apologize to the creators or to the people that she doesn't want to apologize to. But I think that Madison was right in the sense that this has kind of tarnished the image that the anti-MLM community has a little bit. And I feel like maybe they didn't deserve it. I make anti-MLM videos and I don't feel like I uh, am toxic. I feel like I've done my best even in this situation to be just like as fair and like as grounded as possible and not to let myself be influenced in one way or another, though I obviously have my bias in the sense that I am anti-MLM. That's it. Um, I just thought it's important to share this other side to the story and I would love to hear what you guys think about this. And um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!